Welcome to our study of Parashah Black Destroyer, the weekly Torah portion that we will read in every synagogue around the world during this week's Shabbat Saturday morning service. May you be blessed as you read along with us. Ambalak destroyed the son of Zippor, saw on that Israel had done to the Ammonites, Numbers 22.2. Last week's Parashah Torah portion ended with Israel seeking to pass through the land of Ammonites on their way to the Promised Land. The Ammonites responded with war, but with God's help, Israel defeated them. In this week's Parashah, we see the overpowering strength of God's bless blessing on Israel. When Balak, the king of Moab, sent a sor sorcerer named Balaam, to curse Israel, he found that he could not do so. Although Balaam was commissioned to pronounce a curse over Israel, he found that he could only issue a blessing instead of saying, How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? Numbers 23a. Many might come against the nation of Israel, but no one can curse those whom Adonai himself has blessed. The, man, the Moabites, King Balak, whose name means waste, to lay waste, wanted to lay waste the nation of Israel. To his dismay, he found that he was unable to do so because of God's blessing upon her. Why did King Balak Feel so threatened by Israel that he felt the need to have her cursed? It is because Balak, along with his elders, had heard to the Israelites stunning victories over the mighty enemy of Silahan in Og. Therefore, descending, therefore deciding that it would be too risky to fight Israel directly, they hired a spiritual mercenary, Balaam, who has a heathen sorcerer to put a hex on their enemies. Although we may consider this an innocent superstition, many practice such magic even today. For instance, the, in the United States, there exists from a Louisiana voodoo, also known as New Orleans voodoo. It is rooted in West Africa, Dinamican uh, Vodun, which comes to the American South north of slave tribe trade. The people, I mean, sorry, the Bible strictly forbids the people of God's practice such sorcery. Neither are we to seek guidance from astrologers, sorcerers, psychics, or those who consult with the dead. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is given you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, one who practiced witchcraft or a smooth slayer, or one who in interpretates omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritualist, or one who calls up the dead. <clears throat> For all who do these things are in a abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispose, listens to the smooth players and the um, de deliverers, but as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you, Deuteronomy 18, 9, and 13. Sadly, the rise in the propriety 
and acceptance of books and films such as Harry Potter series has led some Christians to break this ser serious commandment at their own peril. As the world becomes darker and more terrifying, many people seek guidance and comfort from sorcerers and others skilled in the occult arts. But as God's people, we, we are to come out from among them and be separate. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 The advisory of humankind seeks to deceive and enslave us through a variety of methods, false doctrines mixed with true doctrines, false religions, and, and falsely, fleshly temptations through the spirit, spiritist book, TV, and more. But those who follow Yeshua, Jesus, actually have an advantage that is superior to any those methods Believers have the Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit, to lead and guide them into the truth. Therefore, they do not need to, to stumble around in the kingdom of darkness looking for direction from those who serve the evil one. For God promises that if we seek him, we with all of our hearts and, with, and, and will find him, Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen and the and that those who are his his sheep will hear his voice John ten twenty seven he has not left us to our devices wondering which way we should go even though most people in today's modern Western culture do not forcefully engage in placing curses on others, people frequently and acknowledgely affect others in a negative sense with their words. The Bible tells us that the power of life or death in our tongue, Proverbs 18.21, therefore we need to be deliberate when we speak about or over other people, ensuring that our words are constructive and life-giving. Not everyone has been so privileged to have blessings spoken over their life, especially as a child. All too often we hear parents, teachers, children, even pastors speak up, a pill, uh, a pollen, Politically ungodly words over others. These negative words can pierce the hearts and souls. False labels are taken to the heart and believed to be true, such as loser, stupid, lazy, hopelessness, ugly, bad, worthless, um, um, intimate idiot, jerk, brat, or unlovable. What is the answer to the very real problem? We can, we escape the multitude of words cursed spoken over us. The answer is found in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Not only do we find unconditional love and acceptance with Yeshua, but also the blood of the Messiah has the power to break every curse that has ever been spoken over us, whether intentionally or out of ignorance. Yeshua became a curse for us so that we could be redeemed and set free from every curse. Messiah redeemed us from the curse of the law becoming the curse of, for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone whom is hung on a pole. Galatians, Gal Galatians 3.13 Blessing and cursing the Jewish people. By taking 
upon himself the task of cursing the Jews, Balaam entered into the Jewish history books as Balaam Harasha. Balaam, or Balaam, the wicked. Although he called himself a prophet of God, he was motivated more by earning a prophet with his gift with identifying, warning, teaching, and blessing others with it. In Judaism, some considered his name to mean without a nation or people, Alim, su suggesting that by going to curse Israel, he became excluded to cut off from a place in the world to come. Olim Hoba. The reality that Balak and Balim ignored is that God has promised to bless those who bless the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to curse those who curse us. Genesis 12 3. However, many people or nations are cutting themselves off from a blessing and place in heaven by attempting to curse the Jews. Although Belim passed legacy powers, they were tiny compared to God's power. Their times, Belim tried to curse Israel, and three times he involuntarily blessed them instead. Over the centuries, many people and nations have tried to destroy Israel, like Balak, but none have succeeded in wiping Israel off the map as they have desired. Hamas and other Islamic terror groups have written into their chapters the goal of exiling Israel and driving her people into the sea. This desire to wipe out the Jewish people has been shared by Nazi Germany, the Spanish Empire, Baz Bazatine Empire, Aust um, Australian Empire, Philistine, Innocent, Persia, and Sea Book of Esther, and more. Why has Israel survived against all odds even till today? It is because of God's conventional promise to the seed of, or offspring of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, who gives the sun for the light, day, and the ordinance of the moon, and the stars for a light by night. Who disturbs the sea and its waves roar? The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart before me, saith the Lord, then the sea, seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Jeremiah 31, 35, and 36. God has blessed the Jewish people, and they are so secure as the stars in the sky. Even though God has made the survival and ultimate self salvation of Israel secure, Psalm 83 prophesies that in the last days a come Confederacy, confederacy will be formed before our very eyes that intends to wipe out the name of Israel forever. They have taken crafty courses against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come and let us out them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Psalms 83, 3 and 4. 
Therefore, is only one way with that Israel may be defeated, and that is through his, her own sin by turning away from God. This is what happened to the people of Israel in this Persia. In this Persia. Oh, Parashah, I'm sorry. Although Balak and Balim failed in bringing a curse upon Israel, they brought destruction upon themselves by committing sexual immorality with the Moabites, women, and worshipping their god, Baal, Parol. Parol. So Israel was joined to that Baal, and Paran, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Numbers 23, 25-3. Seeing his chosen people worship pagan gods, in, enraged God, and in, presided in a plague that killed 24,000 Israelites. Scripture reveals that it, it was Balaam who concealed the, the Mandarinites to rule Israel through the association with their women. Numbers 31, 7, and 16. The rabbi, therefore, was discerned another meeting of the name of Balim as Oluim, one who confused the nation. What happened in the end to Balaam? After being ridiculed by his own donkey, who marvelously tried to save him by telling him about the end that lay before him, Balaam finally died in a battle with the Israelites. Numbers 31 8. So ended the life of one who was motivated by greed and selfish ambitions rather than by God's righteousness. The book of Jude underscores the error of false prophets like Balaam. Woe to them, for they had gone in the way of Cain, have run greed, greedily in the air of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah, Jude one eleven. What was the grave error of Balaam that was seriously enough to be included alongside Cain who murdered his brother, Genesis 4, as well as Korah, who led a rebellion against Moshe that resulted in the deaths of many Israelites, Numbers 16. Who can blame the answer in the, the innocent Jewish text, Kakao, a boat, or, or ethics of the fathers, which contrasts Balaam's sins with Abraham's righteousness? Whoever poses the following three traits is of the disciples of our fathers Abraham and whoever possesses the opposite their traits traits is of the disciples of the wicked Balaam. The disciples of our father Abraham have a good eye, a meek spirit, and a humble soul. The disciples of the wicked Balaam have an evil, greed, envy, a haughty spirit and a gross soul. The disciples of our fathers, Abraham, benefit in the world and inherit the world to become, as is stated, to bequeath to those who love me is and their treasures shall fill. I shall fill. Proverbs 8, 21. The disciples of the wicked Balaam inherit pro, pro, 
and descent see into the pit of destruction, as it is stated, and that your God shall cast them into the pit of destruction, bloody, deceitful men. They shall not obtain half their days, and I shall trust in you. Psalms 54:23. Yeshua also referred to the lame, saying to the believers at Permagen, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of the lame, who taught Felix to ex exile the Israelites to sin by eating food, sacrificed to idols, and by committing sexual immorality, Revelations 2.14. And Peter re refers, refers to Balim in his warning to believers, many the, may the people of God today take heed. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Oral, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was rebuked for a wrongdoing by a donkey, a beast without speech, who spoke with the man's voice and retained the prophet's madness. These men are springs without water and mists dri driven by the st a storm blackest darkest and reserved for them for they their mouth empty boastful words and be appealing to the lustful desire of simple human nature they entice people who can just in escaping from those who live in air. Second Peter two fifteen and eighteen. Why are they so many warnings about the name? And how are they re relevant today? Balim, even after failing to curse Israel directly continued to associate and co and cooperate with those who saw Israel's destruction. Some within the Christian church not only associate with but also financially support people, people, charities, and causes with an anti-Israel and anti-Semitic agenda. For example, Abelak and Balim, we can see that being drawn into disposing, despairing Israel and is a dangerous path and talking donkeys appear to be in short supply these days. Wild Alex. <laughs> May God's people dissociate from those who curse Israel and teach in, in Semitic lies. May the followers of Yeshua, both Jews and Gentiles, choose to stand with Israel to the very end and continue in holiness. Let us bless Israel and pray that God will save her from all those enemies who try to curse her. Let us also pray that the Jewish people will seek after God with all of their hearts and will walk in righteousness before him, it is then they will find him. Many falsely said that God is finished with his chosen people. However, Bible prophecy clearly states that this will never be so. In fact, in the, these last days, God is moving among his people to physically and spiritually restore them. You can be part 
of this end time move of God. Oh, excuse that statement there. Okay. And hear the word of the Lord, you nations, proclaim in this distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. Jeremiah 31.10. Shabbat Shalom.